this case is so shocking. So what happened yesterday in court? I would say in... in is was, it a court? It, no, it's a, it's a public body known as the Commission on Offender Review. Where? Um, it's in Florida. It's in Tallahassee. It was previously known as the Florida Parole Commission. Parole was abolished in 1984 in Florida and, and across much of the country. So it's interesting. There are still a number of cases that are um, es essentially grandfathered in. Mark is one of those. And he comes up for parole uh, consideration every two years approximately. They can decide anywhere between seven and one year they can bring uh, a, a case back. And they, they brought him back. They did a subsequent interview. And they basically said that um, rather than making a vote yesterday. They would like to bring the full committee back because only with the full committee can they make a much bigger reduction in his parole. Tell us Mark's story. Yeah. Um, Mark went to prison in 1980. He, he basically was 20 years old and had had a dispute with his stepmother and the authorities over uh, the will of his father. He didn't really understand the concept of probate, and this gets at a larger issue with Mark, the whole question of whether he understood the legal process and a lot of really the laws of people. Um, Mark was gifted as a child, incredibly gifted, a savant, if you will, and really had these skills but no social uh, understanding. And they tried for years, in a sense, to figure out what to do with him. And ultimately, it was the prison system that stepped in and just held him tight for the last 34 years. So he took his dad's tools that his dad had left him. In fact, it was his bond with his father, because his yeah. father taught him to use these tools. How did he become the Houdini of the prison system? Well, it also goes back to his father. Um, in a sense, Mark and his father had this deep connection that was really a mechanical connection. Um, his dad had a history of having been in uh, World War II, was an OSS person, um, really believed that the communists were coming. And he sort of prepared his child, his only son, his only child, um, in, in a way to be prepared for the Russians who were coming. And Mark grew up around guns. He grew up around, um, you know, essentially what he calls guerrilla warfare, this sort of avoidance tactics and theories that his dad prepared him in. And then when he got to prison, he felt like he should not be there. He didn't understand the sentence. He didn't understand the people around him and the menace that they represented. And he did what he had really learned to do as a child, and he, and he escaped. He ran. He evaded the, the police. And, you know, he stayed out for only about 24 hours. But what he was able to do, he swam a river, uh, he hot-wired a car, and he was caught the next day in a motel without a shootout, without any further real incident. Um, but he had made his statement. Can you set up the scene in your film? It's when Dr. Berlin meets Mark for the first time. Yeah. Basically, Dr. Berlin, who 30 years prior had said that Mark was faking mental illness, when I contacted him about the film, he essentially said, uh, if Mark DeFries is still in prison, then I must have made a mistake. And that catalyzed a whole series of steps that led to him going to meet Mark in prison.